Praise the Lord. Thank God for another day in Him, another day in His grace and His mercy. For He has eyes to see and He has ears to hear. And so we don't make it through the day without the Lord seeing and hearing us. So I thank Him for His grace and His mercy today. For He brought us thus far and kept us. And I thank God for that song that we were singing in worship and praise. And the lyrics say, Yes, Lord, from the bottom of my heart to the depths of my soul. Yes, Lord, completely yes, my soul says yes. And I thank God that one day he touched my heart, he touched my mind, and he helped me to say yes to him and his will. Amen. Amen. So I give honor to God tonight, who's the head of my life. I give honor to his son, Jesus. I give honor to the gift of the Holy Spirit. I give honor to Bishop Joseph White, the founder and presiding bishop of the Church of Living God International. I give honor to the Board of Directors and to Elder Walter Jones, our District Superintendent out of Bloomington, Illinois. I give honor today to you, Assistant Pastor Harris, a great woman of God who is pushing through to do the work of the Lord in his vineyard. Somebody say his vineyard. Because it is his vineyard and it's his people. And so he just trusted us to be in the house of God and to trust us with his word. And I give honor tonight to all ministers, saints, and friends, those near and far. In tonight's Bible study, the topic is spiritually strong. Spiritually strong. We're going to be in a couple of places. We're going to start out in Psalms 84. We're going to find ourselves over in Jude 20. We're going to find ourselves and finish up over in Ephesians. And these notes are coming from um, a teaching that Bishop White had recently. We was talking about how we have to be spiritually strong in the church, spiritually strong in the Lord. And I said you would turn to Psalms 84 and verse 4. Psalms 84 and verse 4. The Lord is looking to make us spiritually strong. Amen. And Psalms 84 and 4 says, Blessed are they that dwell in thy house. They will be still praising thee, Silah. Blessed is the man whose strength is in thee, and whose heart are the ways of them, who passing through the valley of Baca make it a well. The rain also filleth the pools. They go from strength to strength. Every one of them in Zion appeared before God. O Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob, Selah. And so in those couple of scriptures, there's a couple things God is pointing out there. He says, blessed is the man, in, in, in verse first and verse 4, blessed are they that dwell in thy house. So if you desire to be blessed by God, we have to dwell in his house. But tonight we're talking about being spiritually strong. So not a particular blessing that you may be looking for, but the fact that God wants to make us spiritually strong. And so 6 says, who passing through the valley of Baca make it a well. The rain also filled the pools. And the reference there talks about in that valley, the people shed tears or they cry or they have their disappointment. So they, they have their sorrows. And so their tears make it the well. But we start out tonight saying that God has eyes to see and he has ears to hear. So six said that you sometimes may be in a place where it seems like you're in the valley and your situations in life. They may result in a lot of tears. And if you're not shedding tears on the outside, sometimes we have tears on the inside. But in verse 7, it says, They go from strength to strength. Every one of them in Zion appeared before God. But somehow, throughout everything in our life that can cause us to have tears, God can make us go from strength to strength. And the Bible begins to tell us how that's possible. It says they appeared before God. And we know as believers that God is not on this earth, that he's in heaven. So there's no way to physically appear before God at this present time because he's seated on the throne. So the way that we go to God or appear before God is in prayer. And it says as much in the next verse, verse 8. It says, O Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob. Selah. He said, hear my prayer. Because we need to go from strength to strength. So we need God to hear our prayer. Because he knows that sometimes we're down in the valley. 
Could be the job that has you down in the valley. Could be family members, situations, sicknesses that can have you down in the valley. But he desires it to make us spiritually strong tonight. So turn with me over to Jude 20. God desires to make us spiritually strong over in Jude 20. To be strong in him. And as I get there myself, he is looking. His eyes are upon us. So he is looking at us and he sees what we go through. And he has all power. And in Jude 20 it says, But ye beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And we know in the natural, when you strengthen yourself, you exercise, you work out, you have to do something to become strengthened. If my goal is to put on muscle, if I don't do anything, I'm not going to put on any muscle. It's not just going to come by, by just wishing and hoping that things will change. But to strengthen ourselves, even in this world, we know there's an action or there's something we have to do. And according to the Bible, it says for us to be built up in God or to be strengthened, we have to pray in the Holy Ghost. 20 again says, but ye beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Prayer is good, but praying in the Holy Ghost is better. Prayer is good. I encourage everybody to pray because the Bible encourages us to pray. But praying in the Holy Ghost is better because praying in the Holy Ghost builds you up in your most holy faith. How were the people able to go through that valley? In the, to shed all those tears so where even the rain filled the pools. But how were they able to go from strength to strength? Because they had to build themselves up in their time of sorrow. They had to build themselves up in their time of need. They had to build themselves up in the time to take action. And that's why David said, Lord, hear my prayer. And so the Bible says in 21 that when we do this, it will keep ourselves in the love of God. It will keep us looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. When we go from strength to strength or we become spiritually strong, it will keep us in the love of God. When you're spiritually strong, you're kept in the love of God day by day. Not only do you love God every day when you're spiritually strong, Monday through Sunday, loving God every day, but God will love you every day as well. When you're spiritually strong and he will shed his love abroad in your heart by the Holy Ghost when you're spiritually strong. But it said also it will keep us looking for still in 21 looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. When we have become spiritually strong that no matter what we find ourselves in, no matter if we're down in the valley for a season, no matter if we have tears in our eyes in the midnight hour. Being spiritually strong, being built up, will keep us looking for mercy. It'll keep us looking for the mercy of Jesus. That instead of giving up, because the times have gotten tough, we'll go through and say, Lord, I need your mercy. Lord, you shed your blood for me. Lord, you ever live to make intercessions for me. Lord, I know you're coming back one day. Those are words and phrases and sayings from the Bible of someone that is spiritually strong. And it said not only that in 21, it will keep you looking unto eternal life. When you have become spiritually strong in the Lord, no matter what's going on, you'll keep looking for eternal life. You can be in the valley. You can be on the mountaintop. What is the mountaintop? It's when everything is going well. When you have everything. When you got that job making six figures, when you got that new car and it's smelling good and it's driving good and the steering is straight, y'all know what I'm talking about. When everything is good, when the house is looking good and the bills are paid off, when you're on the mountaintop, you will still find yourselves looking unto eternal life because God will have made you spiritually strong. Turn with me over to Ephesians 4. There's another reason that God wants to make us spiritually strong. The first reason is for ourselves. Just like on the job, you can't help that company 
unless you're strong in what they hired you for. Unless you got strong skills, strong hard skills, whether it's a degree, whether you just have the knowledge, or even strong soft skills, your personality. You got a strong and good personality. Someone that can make the clients and the customers feel invited. You got to be strong in something to make a difference. So the first thing is for us. Being spiritually strong is for yourself. God needs you to make it through the valley. God needs you to not forget him when you're on the mountaintop. So the first spiritually strong is for ourselves. But the second reason he wants us to be spiritually strong is found over in Ephesians chapter 4. We're going to go to Ephesians 4 and 11 tonight. Talking about being spiritually strong. Ephesians 4 and 11. And the Bible says, And he gave, talking about God, And he gave some apostles, and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith, and in the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. The second reason God desires to make all of us spiritually strong is he plans to give you to somebody else. He plans to give you for somebody else. He plans to give you to do to the saving of somebody else's soul. Verse 11 says he gave, he gave these people to the people. He gave some apostles. Somebody needs an apostle in their life. He gave some prophets. Somebody needs to hear what thus saith the Lord. He gave some evangelists. Somebody needs somebody to come through the neighborhood, to come through the community, to come through the city, to come through the school, to come somewhere and evangelize or encourage them that everything's going to be all right. And he gave some pastors. How can they hear unless they have a preacher? And how can they preach unless they be sent by God? And he gave some teachers, 11 says, somebody that can teach the word of God, rightly dividing the word of truth, not just with words, but in power and demonstration of the Holy Ghost. But these people can only do this unless they're spiritually strong. You can't be an effect of anybody or anything for God unless you yourself are strong in the spirit. That's the second thing. Spiritually strong is for everybody else. God wants to use you. Yes, you. Yes, me, Pastor Harris. One day I said, I'll go to your church, but I'm not preaching. Told my wife. I said, I'll go. I'll sit way in the back and listen, but I'm not preaching. I'm not teaching. I'm not witnessing. I'm not fasting. And to myself, I didn't tell her all of these things, but I did tell her I was not preaching. But in my mind, like, I'm not doing X, Y, and Z. Don't call me to do nothing. I'm not ushering. Just be glad I'm going. But the Lord wanted to make me spiritually strong. He desires to make you spiritually strong for a reason. Verse 12 says, the reason is, it's for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. He wants to make all of us spiritually strong so we can perfect the saints, perfect the people of God. What does perfect mean? To help encourage them to know who God is, to know the truth of the Bible, to know what thus said the Lord, to experience spiritual deliverance, spiritual gifts, healing, the word of knowledge and wisdom, all the things that cause you to be where you are today, he's looking for you to be that person to call somebody else to believe to be where you are today. Even if where you are is just watching this service tonight, just sitting on the seats tonight, God is expecting you to be strong in the Lord, that you can be the one to help somebody be exactly where you are. Don't look at yourself as if, well, I'm not an apostle, I'm not a pastor. But you're somebody in God. But you're strong in the Lord because you're here or you're watching or you're listening. And God needs you to help somebody else be exactly where you are. Don't worry about where he's sending you to, but worry about where you are now. The grace that he's given you now. The mercy Jesus has afforded you now. That has brought you to where you are now. That has kept you through the valley now. That has lifted you up now. He's looking for you to be that person. To the edifying of body of Christ. But how long should you be? How long do we need to be spiritually strong? 13 says, till we all come in the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God. Till we all come in the unity of the faith. 
So everyone that you know is believing the same thing. The unity of the faith in God. The unity of faith can only come by being spiritually strong. Because when we're spiritually weak, we're tossed to and fro, as the Bible says. I believe in God on Sunday. I don't know about Monday. Praising God on Tuesday because it's a church night. I've been built up again. But soon as Wednesday hit his hump day and I can barely make it over the hump. Down stuck in the valley. Everybody else looking at Friday can barely make it to 430. Spiritually weak. And if I'm spiritually weak, how can I bring somebody else into the unity of the faith? But God says he wants you to be spiritually strong tonight. And he said that when, verse 14, that we hence forth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and the cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. God wants us to be spiritually strong that we're no longer swayed by every wind of doctrine. We're no longer discouraged or turned away from God just because some other church or another person has a doctrine that says you don't have to fast. Just because some other church said you don't have to travel for the Lord. Just because some other doctrine may have said, well, water baptism is enough. You don't need to be baptized in the spirit that was just for the people in the Bible. God wants us to be spiritually strong. So as the Bible just said, that we're not tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine but that we'll be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. 15 says, but speaking the truth in love may grow up in him, grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. To be spiritually strong tonight, the Lord wants us to be strong enough in the spirit to speak the truth in love. The hardest part of living for the Lord is speaking the truth in love. When the Lord tells you somebody needs to hear the truth, especially if you know them, it's usually easier to speak to somebody you don't know, to give a card to that somebody in Walmart, to encourage somebody over the Internet. But how about speaking the truth to your spouse? How about speaking the truth to your children? Letting them know that Jesus is coming back. Because he would have encouraged you, as Jude said, you would be built up on your most holy faith, knowing that the Lord is coming and looking unto eternal life. The Lord can make you spiritually strong enough to tell that child, to tell that husband or wife, to tell that mother and father, to tell that best friend that you've been friends with for 35 years, that you have to look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith, that one day he's coming back, that you can have the Holy Ghost by being spiritually strong. The Lord can make us strong enough in the spirit, what spirit? The Holy Spirit, to speak the truth in love. And that we can grow up into him in all things. Not just some things, maybe you've grown up in him in ushering. You've grown up in him in tithes and offerings. You've grown up in him in being the greatest evangelist that anybody's seen in your community. But the Bible said he wants us to grow up into him in all things. Being spiritually strong is when the areas we've been spiritually weak in may be a great preacher, but then weak in this area over here, the Bible said he wants us to grow up in all things, being spiritually strong, and he's able to do that tonight. If you can turn with me over to Ephesians 6 and 10, going just a little bit over here, Ephesians 6 and 10, talking about being spiritually strong. So we've learned tonight that God wants us to be spiritually strong. The first reason is for ourselves, to help us go through the valley, the hard times in life. It is a lie from the pit of hell if someone has told you a form of doctrine that everything is all right all the time in God. The Bible never promised that. It said there will be tears, there will be sorrows, but God is able to bring, bring you through. So the first thing in being spiritually strong is for yourself, to help you make it over, to help you make it through. The second is, is for everybody else, because somebody needs to see you living holy. Somebody needs to see that God brought you out of the valley. There are people tonight that don't think they can make it to tomorrow, but you can be the one that's spiritually strong to show them that not only can they make it into tomorrow, but they can make it into eternal life. And then the next thing is, over in Ephesians 6 and 10, the third reason, the third and final reason we're going to talk about tonight, that the Lord wants us to be spiritually strong is because we're in a spiritual battle. 
We can't see it, but we're in a spiritual battle. According to the Bible, Ephesians 6 and 10, it says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Finally, my brethren, if all you have heard in your life is what you heard tonight, the Bible is saying, finally, after hearing the last 15, 20 minutes, it said, be strong in the Lord. Finally, if the pastor has told you, if the word of God has shown you that this is what God wants you, be strong in the Lord. Ask the Lord to make you strong. And here's why it says that put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. The wiles of the devil are the tricks of the devil. Some of us older saints, we remember Wiley e. Coyote, the coyote that always tried to get the roadrunner. Wiley was his name because he always had wiles to try to get the roadrunner. He always had traps, schemes, and things, and methods, and ways to try to trap, kill, steal, and destroy him. So tonight the Bible is saying that we can stand against the wiles of the devil or the traps, the schemes, the disappointments, everything that he's trying to do to us to kill, steal, destroy, to take us out, to keep you down in the valley to where you can't get up, you can't dry your weary eyes to encourage your brother and sister. But God is saying he wants us to be spiritually strong tonight and he can make us strong because we have an adversary. There's always somebody at the top trying to push a rock down on you, trying to drop a safe down on you, trying to have a hole in the ground for you to fall into, and his name is Satan. And it says that we have to put on the whole armor of God because we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. You can't win a spiritual battle if you're spiritually weak. Only the strong survive is what they say, and that's true. That's why the Bible said, be strong in the Lord, in the power of his might. And if we got this adversary, and it has all these spiritual wickedness, all these traps, then we have to be spiritually strong to win. I don't know about you, but I want to win in God tonight. And he says in the word of God in 13, it says, Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. The evil day is not just the bad days. The evil day is also the good days. That's why the Bible says that it is hard for even the rich man to enter in. They got it made. Every day seems good for them. But it can be the evil day because you can have a life so good that you think you don't need God. But Jews said that when you pray in the spirit, building yourselves up in your most holy faith, it keeps you looking unto eternal life. So even in the evil day, again, when everything is going well, you can still look unto the Lord. It says that having done all to stand, stand on the mountaintop, stand in the valley, stand in your trials, stand in the blessings. Don't let the blessings take you out from God. The Bible warns from that. God himself said that when I have made you fat, when I have delivered you, when I have brought you out, don't forget about me. Being spiritually strong. You got to be spiritually strong to take what God has for you and to go through the right way. It says, stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth, again speaking the truth in love, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherein you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always. That takes us all the way back to Psalms 84, where we started. Praying always, Lord, have mercy. Lord, strengthen me because I'm going through. Lord, strengthen me because I got that call on the job that I was looking for. Well, now I got six figures. Lord, strengthen me to help me be back at church on Tuesday. Don't let me buy a new car and a new house and drive off and move away and they never see me again. But Lord, have mercy upon me and help me do what I vow to you. Because you can make a vow to God and he'll bless you according to the vow. And when you get the blessing. Would you change your mind? But God wants to make us spiritually strong. He said, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Praying in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. That's taking us back to Ephesians 4 about how he wants to strengthen us for somebody else. He wants to make you strong tonight so that you can have supplication for the saints. What is supplication? By taking their name to the Lord in prayer. Not just praying, because again, praying is good. 
But praying in the spirit is better. The Bible says that the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous availed much. The righteous pray in the spirit. So when you have supplication for the saints, when you can pray for that sister or that brother to be delivered, that their mind to be changed, that your prayer shall be answered by God, according to the Bible. And my last scripture is 2 Corinthians 10 and 4. He said, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. God wants to make you spiritually strong. By having you to always pray in the spirit. That you can be who he wants you to be. And then you can be who he wants you to be for somebody else. Because somebody came to me one day with the spirit. Changed my life. So he's looking for me to go to somebody else with the spirit. That he can change their life. And over in 2 Corinthians chapter 10. So we just talked about this spiritual warfare. That there is a war going on for your soul. And for my soul. And we talked about mostly the armor of God. Mostly the armor. Having protection from the things of this world. But there are times when God wants us to fight back in the spirit. Not talking about physical, physical fighting, going to blows. Not talking about saying things to get somebody back. The Bible says, God says, vengeance is mine. Not mine. Vengeance is his. So fighting for the Lord is not something we do on this earth to people that we see because we wrestle not against flesh and blood. So there's no need for you to try to get back at somebody. But there is a need for you and a need for me to get back at the devil. And the Bible says over in 2 Corinthians 10 and 4, For the weapons of our warfare, what warfare? Ephesians 6 told us that, Spiritual wickedness in high places. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, which means they're not natural physical things, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Let me read that again. The Bible's letting us know, being spiritually strong, the weapons that you have in the spirit, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. The weapons that we have by praying in the spirit are mighty through God, the God that shaped the heavens, the God that made heaven and earth, the God that sits on the throne that has all power. It says prayer in the spirit is mighty. Mighty to what? The pulling down of strongholds. The stronghold that has been on our lives, our whole life, since the day we was born. The stronghold of the enemy, the stronghold of Satan, the stronghold of sickness, the stronghold of death, the stronghold of disappointment, the stronghold that caused our minds to go opposite of God. It says that praying in the spirit, which is our weapon of warfare in this spiritual battle, is mighty to the pulling down of strongholds. What can it do? My last scripture, verse 5. Casting down imaginations and every high thing, spiritual wickedness in high places, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. When we are spiritually strong, and God desires to make everybody spiritually strong because he said in his word, it's not his will that any should perish. He wants to save everybody. So don't think you can't be spiritually strong. But being spiritually strong says that it can cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bring it into captivity, every thought to the obedience of Christ. All those things that were in Ephesians 6 and 10, the spiritual wickedness in high places, all the things, every single thing in the spiritual warfare can be cast down. Don't think it's too hard for God. He can cast down everything that exalted itself against the word of God. You can't be saved. You can't teach. You can't preach. You're never going to be anything. You're going to always be in this situation. What's the use of living? What's the use of trying? The Bible said that our spiritual warfare, the spiritual strength in God, praying in the Holy Ghost, it can cast that down. It said that it can also bring it into captivity. Sometimes you need God to come in and just grab a hold of Satan and cast him out. He did it before, and he'll do it again. The Bible says that Jesus saw Satan be cast down as lightning from heaven, that he was thrown out as lightning, threw him down so fast that he looked like a bolt of lightning. Don't you need that tonight? In the spirit, God can cast down 
whatever it is that you've been going through. He can cast down any doubt. He can cast down the struggles. He can cast down anything that has exalted itself against what God would have you to do. Whether it's everything's going well, you don't need a healing. You don't need a deliverance in your finances. You don't need a new home. You don't need a new job. You don't need a spouse. You don't need children because you already have all of that. But God said in his word that this spiritual warfare is behind the things that will cause you to think you don't need God. That in that great day, when you get to judgment and you can't take any of that with you, you can't take the job. The car won't matter anymore. The house won't matter. The kids can't get you in. The best husband in the world can't go on your behalf. But when God looks at you and God looks at me and he says, well, what did you do with the word? What did you do when the preacher came? What did you do when the song was on the radio that told you that I was a good God? He's going to look at you and me and ask you a question. Were you strong in the spirit? Did you know Jesus in the power of his resurrection? Were you born again? Were you washed and cleansed in the word as we, as we stand tonight? The Lord is going to look to see if you have his Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is the one that makes us strong in the Lord and the power of his might. And you can't be spiritually strong without the strongest spirit there is. The Holy Spirit is the strongest spirit. There are other spirits, evil spirits, spiritual wickedness, but the Holy Spirit is the power of God. And that's what God is looking for tonight. He's looking to fill you with the Holy Ghost. That you and me, we can be who he's called us to be. That we can be an, a, a pastor, a teacher, a witness to him. That we can be the one that can tell our family member the truth and love. Just like somebody told us the truth and love today. And if you desire to be spiritually strong, when we lift our hands in prayer tonight, ask God to fill you with the Holy Ghost. If you don't have a desire to be spiritually strong, you can ask God to give you that desire. And he can give you that. And he can make you that. And he can do that for you. If all you know tonight as we lift our hands is you are the one down in the valley of Baca tonight. And you got tears in your eyes. The Lord said that he can pull you out. And he can take you from strength to strength. Whatever you need tonight, God has got it. And I pray that the Bible study was a blessing. I pray that you allow the Lord to move by his spirit. I pray that you allow him to come in tonight. He's looking for somebody to open their heart. And allow the spirit to come in.